Welcome back Riverside City College fam. Today we're diving deep into the heart and mind of our previous guests and our co-host, Mr. Judson Hudson, part-time faculty here at RCC and serial business owner. Justin, thanks for joining us one-on-one. -on -one. Thanks, Doc. So today, um, let's start on your journey. What pivotal moments, students, I think you'll like this. What pivotal moments or experiences have shaped who you are today, both personally and then we'll get into professionally? That's a great question. And you know, overall, when I, when I was asked this or when you sent me the questions earlier, I was thinking about that and I was thinking about my time here at RCC. Mm. Um, you know, I failed. I failed two times here. And so I remember when I was a student here, I was trying to figure things out and they didn't go the, the way I thought they would go. And so then I took a step back and I said, hey, what if I went to school to be a firefighter? So mm. I went to paramedic school or EMT school through RCC. Oh. I failed at that. And so then I had to take another step back and think about what I wanted for my life. And, and you know, when I was thinking about things, I didn't have a plan. Oh. So then once I started to, you know, put a plan in place, then I was able to execute and move forward or towards my goals and my dreams. Okay, that's good. That's personally. What about professionally? Professionally, I worked in the corporate setting and I was miserable. Mm. You know, I was, I was at a company for almost 12 years and it was just like, I'm going to work not feeling fulfilled. And I'm giving all my time and my energy away to this to this organization. And that just that wasn't it for me. Would you say that the organization gave you additional skill sets, though, that you're able to utilize today that maybe you would not have developed if you hadn't been there? Yes and no. I think my time at that organization was um, overdue. Um, and I was in the same position for 12 years. Mm -hmm. And so everything became redundant. Oh, I see. You know, there was nothing new. I wasn't being challenged. Okay. And so that feeling of just not growing anymore, yeah. I, was, I was, you know, mad with myself. I would get upset and just, I hated going there. I hated mm. going there. Okay, that's good. Wow. So in your roles, both personally, professionally, as a... Um, instructor here as a business owner, you've undoubtedly faced challenges and opportunities every day. Mm -hmm. Challenges and opportunities. Can you share a recent experience with our students that you had to overcome? A challenge I had to face was uh, actually giving out my first F, fell in a student. Mm -hmm. And that was a little tough for me because I understand why the student is here. They're here to advance their career or their lives. And it came to me like I had to give this student, a few students an F and that was hard for me. But then I had to reflect back and think about all of the things that I was asking the student to do yeah. and they didn't do it. That's fine. Although they showed up to class every day, but they weren't showing, they didn't complete their work and they weren't productive in class. And so I had to also remind myself, it's not your responsibility. It's the student's responsibility to do their part. You did your part. You, you showed up every day. You taught them. You gave them opportunities. You know, you really tried to help them. But at the end of the day, they dropped the ball. So, you know, that was, that was kind challenge. of So the challenge was that you had to give an F. Yeah. The student earned an F. And the opportunity was that, that, that you personally grew. I, yeah, I personally grew. Yeah. Okay. How about on a on a uh, entrepreneur side, challenge, opportunity? You know, the, the, the biggest challenge that I faced was during COVID. So two stores, the stores were shut down because they're in malls. I'm still required to pay rent. And I still have a staff that I have to, you know, um, help financially. We saw some of our best numbers, our best success during COVID. Hmm. Because I, my back was against the wall. And I really had to think outside the box and challenge myself to do things that I normally wouldn't do. So I'm doing pop-ups. I'm, I'm going to places that I first started out selling stuff at, but now I'm like, okay, let's go back to those places. What did I do that got me here? So I went back to doing some of the old things that helped me get to where I am today, 
it was a little uncomfortable because you outgrow things, but you had to take a step back and go do what works for you. Mm -hmm. Stepping outside of my comfort zone with the business and then leaning heavy online, um, you know, not always relying solely on the stores, putting more emphasis into the online because that's a foreign language. I don't know online. I don't know coding, but, you know, working with people that help bring that to life for me. And so the opportunity that, it, that as a result of that experience was, I'm seeing a couple. I, I, I see one is that you were able to tap into an aspect of yourself because mm. your, your back was to the door using your words, that you had to take care of your employees. You had to take care of the business. And so you opened yourself up to seeing what else is out there that you could do. Yes. Yes, I opened up my horizons. And so I started making skateboards. I didn't, I, I didn't think about skateboards. We made face masks, you know, and we still have face masks. I mean, we made um, hand sanitizer. I mean, I really stepped outside of my mm -hmm. comfort zone and I just gave it a shot. Okay, let's, let's try this. Air, car air freshener is cool, let's, let's try this. Mm -hmm. And it worked. And it worked. It worked. That's beautiful. For our students, because many of them don't know, they may not even know what a... Do you all know what a serial entrepreneur is? <laughs> it just means it's a business owner who has their hands yeah, in many people. different uh, industries doing yeah. different things. Could you share with our students some of the serial businesses you are involved in? Yeah, so I have a clothing business. I've had this clothing business for 12 years. Um, I also have an after school program, um, Dare Dreams Are Reachable Every Day, uh, where we teach entrepreneurship. And then I'm also a motivational speaker. Um, I currently have a plethora of contracts with different school uh, districts where I go in and I speak to students about turning their dreams into a reality. Beautiful. You have a couple other things too that you're involved in. Also, uh, part of a donut company, Gourmet Donuts called Doe, uh, that's in Redlands. Um, but He's being modest. <laughs> so he also is involved with a, um, is a YouTube channel where, where he evaluates. Oh, a food blogger. Um, and so I have this channel um, on Instagram. It's Inland Empire. And so uh, we just ended our first season. So now we're going to try a whole new concept, but it's still food reviews um, and just highlighting Inland Empire. There we go. Thank you. All right. We often talk about purpose and passion. What drives you to do what you do and how do you stay connected to your purpose, especially during tough times? Those two questions, purpose and passion, personally and professionally. How do you tap into that mm. every single day. You know, I'm, I'm focused on leaving a legacy. Um, I'm the oldest of four. Um, I have nieces, I have nephews. And so I really think about leaving them something that they can build on and also just um, fulfilling the, the promise of my, my grandparents and my, my parents. You know, my parents sacrificed a lot for me to be here. My grandmother sacrificed a lot for me. And so I don't want to let them down. And so I think about them all the time. And I'm a proud Riverside native. I'm proud to, to rep the Inland Empire. And so I want to leave a legacy where people can honestly say, I remember being from here, not having much pride. But when I saw Justin or the things that he's done with his team, you know, I, I want to help um, take ownership and pride in helping uh, bring in the proper notoriety to our community. You uh overcame a lot of obstacles here at RCC and other colleges. Yes. You have your own businesses now. And you said that you are, who you are is because of your ancestors. Oh, absolutely. And perseverance. So I was, I was a student here in 2005. And I always talk about this in my, my, my story, my journey. You know, I was on academic probation here. But um, I couldn't give up. You know, I, I believed, I saw it. And it's so funny, I went to church yesterday and the, the, message, was, the message was about um, moving the mountains in your life. And I had many mountains, but I had faith, I believed. And I also have to, you know, pay homage to you, Doc. You know, you believed in me and you gave me a chance. Um, and there was also a, a, a mentor of mine, Dr. Tony Ross, who was a student vice president at Cal State LA. Um, we met because we had the same barber and he believed in me. My, I went to him, my, my, my grades were terrible, and he gave me a chance. And so, you know, I, I take those moments and I reflect on them and I try to uh, 
do the same for others. You know, you just never know what someone's going through, uh, what their background is. You know, you got to give folks a chance and you got to help people along the way. That's right. So you did um, end up getting a degree. What's your degree in? My degree is in organizational leadership studies. Awesome. That's your bachelor's degree? That's my bachelor's. And your master's? Uh, organizational leadership studies as wow. well. Wow. What made you decide to choose that area? Uh, to be honest, you know, I wanted to go into um, PR. I wanted to be a publicist. Oh. But I also like business. Okay. So I, I thought at some point I would go into the corporate setting and be a consultant and help uh, organizations, you know, build properly, have a proper structure. Um, so that was my focus, but it didn't pan out that way. Okay, awesome. All right, as a leader in our community, you've likely encountered moments of self-doubt or uncertainty. Mm -hmm. How do you navigate those moments and find the courage to lead with authenticity? Let's, let's back up though. What does it mean to be authentic to you? 100% you. You have to be you. Um, it doesn't matter what other people think. Um, opinions really shouldn't matter. It's you. Are you living your true self are you being your true self um, you find that challenging you know i have struggled with that um you know i have braids um you know i don't look like other people i guess you would say but um i've embraced it and um and i never shy away now uh, of who i am i'm proud to be who i am i embrace myself 110 percent, and you have to do the same and people have to respect you for who you are you know, don't conform, don't bend, be you. If you can't be you, then that's not the space you need to be in. What do you tap into when you're in situations where you believe people may be judging you? What do you tap into that allows you to continue to be your authentic self? You know, I think about my grandmother, my mom. You know, my grandmother grew up in the South. And Did she? Yeah, my, my great-grandfather was an entrepreneur and... You know, he had a lot of challenges. You know, he was a, he, they had 16 kids. Something mm -hmm. students bring up a lot is resilience. Mm -hmm. So this is for you students. Let's talk about resilience. And can you share a time when you faced adversity and bounced back stronger than ever? Yeah, I think I kind of touched on it earlier. It was just where I was at in my life, trying to figure out a way to get out of this funk. And that was, I was here at RCC. I said, okay, I want to try this. I want to try that. That didn't work out. I got this corporate job, that didn't work out. I got another job, that didn't work out. But now I'm in a place where I work for myself and I feel great. Okay. You know, I feel, I feel free, I'm liberated. Okay. Um, but it was just through trial and error mm. that got me here. What kept you going? Just this legacy, I wanna leave a legacy. That's dear um, to you. And I, you know, you just can't give up. You can't, especially when you have Folks who are dependent on you and looking to you as, you know, hope and inspiration, you can't give up. You got to keep going. Good. That's beautiful. Your insights and experiences are invaluable to our students. What advice would you give to someone who's just starting their journey here at Riverside City College and navigating their own path? I'm going to say it again. Ask questions. Reach out to your counselor. Um, and if you do have a professor that you um, have a great rapport with, uh, put some time on their calendar, you know, ask them questions and ask if they can help guide you and get you connected uh, to the right resources here on the campus because we have all the resources for you. And if we don't have the answer, it's just a phone call away where we can figure out to try to get you situated. That's right. Awesome. So reflecting on your journey, what you share with our students, what's one thing you wish you had known then in your younger self <laughs> that would help students today? You know, I think we put a lot of pressure on ourselves that we have to do everything right the first time. Failure is okay. And so I was at a seminar and I heard something and it really stood out to me. So when you hear the word fail, you should think about it like this. First attempt in learning. And so when you start to adopt that type of mentality, that mindset, um, it will kind of take some of the pressure off on you. Um, and it will allow you to kind of just explore more and do more until you get it right. That's good. That's good. That's good, y'all. Hope you heard that. It's real good. In closing, what message or insight would you leave with the students at RCC? Mm. You know, we only have one life to live. And so I want you to realize that and maximize your time. Um, you know, tomorrow isn't promised. And uh, 
find what makes you happy. Find that purpose. And when you find that purpose, maximize the opportunities that you have and live a fulfilled life. That's good. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your wisdom, you. uh, your challenges, and what inspired you with our students and with our Riverside City College community. Uh, your journey has really been a beacon, so I hope students see that. Uh, and I hope they're able to see that they can create their own lighthouse absolutely. and shine their own light. Absolutely. So until next time, Riverside City College family, keep striving to achieve your goals, purpose, and your greatness. Take care. <laughs>